Hey guys, it's Mrs. Longmire here. In our previous lessons, we've been learning about how readers compare texts. They look at two different texts and compare them. They see what's the same and what's different. And, and our first step is to list all the details and thoughts from text A. And we use a, a T chart and we put all the details up on one text on this side, text A or topic A. Then our second step was to list all the details and thoughts from text B, and that would go on the other side of our T-chart. And we start to group related information and put some things together, and, and we have these categories down the middle. Now, categories that we've looked at so far for fiction text were always story elements, and they never changed, no matter what stories you were comparing. The categories down the middle would always be character and setting and problem and solution and theme or the lesson that you learn and those those categories down the middle those pink categories would never change well today we're going to talk about comparing to non-fiction text information text text that you would read to learn new facts and information about something and you maybe you're, you're in a science book and you're learning about two different animals or maybe you're learning about two different presidents, two different people, or it just depends on what two things that you're comparing. Um, the, the categories are going to change. They're not always going to be the same like they were for stories. For nonfiction texts, they're going to change depending on what you're comparing. If you were comparing two presidents, you might compare the, the, the years that they were elected president or the state that they were from or um, you know where they were born or their fa those kinds of things. But if you were comparing two animals, you might compare their habitat, where they live and what they eat and um, what they look like um, you know so there's and their size and things like that so it just depends on what you're comparing in today's lesson we're going to compare animals we've been reading a lot about animals in our previous lessons we've learned about penguins and and polar bears and and whales and giraffes we've been reading lots about animals and so we're going to go back to some of those previous texts to pull out details about some animals. The two animals that we are going to compare in today's lesson is the emperor penguin, which was from, which was in this book called Polar Animals that we read about. I'll flip to it. Emperor penguin. There it is. And we also read some other books about penguins. So we, we probably have a lot of, of information in our head about penguins. I'm going to put this, I wrote it in red. So it's going to go on this side of the T-chart. All the details we collect about penguins will go over on this side. And then the other animal that we're gonna, we're gonna compare it to is the beluga whale. And we learned about the beluga whale and actually did some writing about the beluga whale after we read this book. There's the beluga whale page. And um, we read, wrote about how they live in pods, remember that? So beluga whale is gonna go over on this side of our T-chart. And all the details that we collect about beluga whales will go on this side okay now categories we're going to go ahead and put the categories down the middle so we know what types of details we're looking for okay we're going to look at where do they live where do they live what do they eat what do they look like it could be size shape color body parts, right? And what do we know about their babies? Baby penguins and baby beluga whales. What do we know about their babies? Okay, so these are the categories. Those are the types of details we're going to be pulling out from these texts um, as we go. Now remember, we're gonna do the penguin first and we're gonna do all the penguin side and then we'll do the beluga whale, and we'll do all the beluga whale details on that side, and then we'll start to look for what do they have that's the same or different. Now, it's gonna be probably pretty easy to find what they're different, because you're talking about a huge whale and a penguin, but let's see if we can find some similarities as well, okay? So we're gonna start with the penguin, okay? And I'm going to flip to the Emperor Penguin page just so you can we can have that on the screen too in case you um, just to kind of remind you here of what um, we learned on this page. You see the baby penguin there and they're huddling over here and they talks about their feathers and um, 
hunting for fish. Okay, so the first category is where do they live? So I'm gonna look here. I know oh, it talks about Antarctica. They live in Antarctica. So I wrote the word Antarctica and I drew an arrow towards the bottom of the world. It's, it's, it's at the bottom. It's actually the South Pole. We learned in another, um, in one, another text. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna put Antarctica up here. And then what do they eat? Well, they're talking about zooming through the, the water looking for fish. So I wrote fish. That's what they eat. What do they look like? Well, if I think about emperor penguins and I'm looking at the, the page here, they're black and white and they also have some orange on them. So I wrote black, white, orange. Um, they have waterproof feathers. So I wrote about waterproof feathers and drew a feather and they have flippers to help them speed through the, the water. So I wrote flippers and I drew an arrow to flippers. So black and white and orange, waterproof feathers and flippers. And what do I know about their babies? Now, I remember from a, the previous text that they uh, lay eggs and they take turns sitting on the egg. The mom and dad do. Um, they weigh less than a pound when they're born, so they're really tiny. Mom and dad take turns watching them and feeding them. So they're really small when they're, when they're babies, less than a pound. Mom and dad take turns and they feed them fish and they come from an egg. So those are some facts that I know about babies. And do you guys wanna help me? Okay, I'm gonna to turn to the beluga whale page and now you're gonna get a chance to help me pull out some details. Remember the first category is where do they live? What do you think? Did you say Arctic Ocean? Yeah, they live um, at the Arctic Ocean in the North Pole and it's cold ocean water. Is that what you were thinking? Arctic Ocean, that's in the North Pole, kind of the opposite from the penguins. They live up here in the North Pole. Okay, next, what do they eat? What do you think beluga whales eat? Are you thinking fish? Yeah, they eat fish. Um, I was reading from another source too. They, they um, also eat other creatures like octopus and crabs. So wrote fish, they eat fish, and they also eat other creatures like octopus. Okay. What do they look like? What do they look like? Look at that page. Did you say white? Yeah, they're white, aren't they? I'm going to write that down here. White. What else? They're huge, aren't they? I'm going to write huge. They're huge. They're white. Did you say they're blowhole? They have a blowhole on top of their head to help them breathe. Yeah, what else? You remember they have that blubber, that fat under their skin to keep them warm. They have that blubber. They're white. They're huge. They have a blowhole on their head. And do you see their flippers? They have flippers, don't they? Great job pulling out those details. And the last category, what do we know about babies? Babies. Look at the very bottom of that page where there's a baby beluga over here. It starts out gray, doesn't it? And then it turns white as it gets older. So it's, the babies are gray and then they turn white. Where do they live? They live with their parents, right? In pods. They live in pods with their parents. And do you know, I did some research on an, in another source and found out that they are 176 pounds when they're born. 176, that's like a full grown man. That's how big they are when they're born. 176 pounds at birth. Wow. Okay. So we have all the facts about beluga whales. Great job pulling out those details um, for, for each of the categories. Now we need to look and see 
remember we go through each row and see if they have what's the same and what's different. I'm going to show you first and then I'll need your help. So where do they live? Well, and for penguins living in Antarctica at the South Pole, and beluga whales live in the Arctic Ocean at the North Pole. So they kind of live in opposite parts of the world. But they both live in water, right? That's something that's similar. Or they both live around water, near water, cold water. Yeah, so they both do live in water, but they live in different parts of the world. So they're similar that they both live in the water, but they're different because they live in different parts of the world, opposite ends of the world. What do they eat? Let me try this one. Well, they both eat fish, don't they? So both beluga whales and emperor penguins eat fish. And they're different that beluga whales also eat octopus and crabs and some other creatures that, that penguins don't eat. Great job. Okay, are you ready to help me? I want you to help me with the next row. What do they look like? Do they have anything that's the same? Emperor penguins are black and white and orange, have feathers and flippers. And beluga whales are huge. They're white. They have the blow hole on top of their head. They have blubber under their skin and they have flippers. Do they have anything that's the same? What do you think? Did you say they both have flippers? Yeah. Great job. And they're both white. They have white on them. Great job. How are they different and how they look? Did you say the beluga whale's huge and the penguin is small? Yeah. The penguins have feathers and beluga whales don't. They have blubber, right? Great job. The, the beluga whales have blowholes and the penguins have a mouth and it, to breathe, right? And yeah, a nose. Great job. You're good at this. Let's do one more. What do you know about their babies? What do you know about their babies? Do they have anything that's the same? What do you think? It's kind of hard to see what's the same, isn't it? Let's do, let's do what's different first. What's different about their babies? Did you say the beluga whale's huge and the penguin's tiny? The beluga whale weighs 176 pounds at birth and the, the penguin weighs less than a one pound. Yeah, so that's a difference. Did you say penguin? the penguins hatch from eggs and the whales come from their mom? Yeah, that's a difference. They both live with their parents, don't they? For a while, that's something that's the same. At the beginning of their life, um, the beluga lives in pods and the penguin lives, lives um, they huddle together with other penguins, but they live with their, fan, with their mom and dad for a while. That's something that's similar. Great job. You did such a good job of going row by row with me and finding what's the same and what's different. Now, if you were in Mrs. Longmire's class for your next assignment, I would have you compare two more animals using our T-chart, okay? So I have um, one that, that you can print out if you have a printer. Um, you know, one, it's going to be the polar bear and the snowy owl. And both of these animals were also in this epic book for kids. And so I'm going to put the, the link in there so that you can um, you can go back and, and pull details out from this book. There's the snowy owl and the other one was the polar bear. And that was one of the first ones. So if you click back, I think, hold on, maybe polar bears page 20. Let's so um, the owl and then here's the polar bear. OK, and so um, I would go back and read those pages again and then fill out the the T-chart. Now, if you don't have a printer, you could just draw lines and, and and make the polar bear on one side and the snowy owl on the other. 
And the, the categories are going to be the same categories that we use today. Where do they live? What do they eat? What do they look like? And what do we know about their babies? Okay. Or about their young. So um, that's what I would have you do. I would have you go through that, this text and pull out those details, or if you've read other texts and, and have other information that you can add to this chart, that's great. And, and fill it out for the polar bear first and then the snowy owl. That's what I would, have, I would have you do if you were in Mrs. Longmire's class, but your teacher might have an even better idea. 